and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I am meeting today's guest for the first time. She is a triathlete. Her name is Izzy Fisher, and she created a product that I was really anxious to try. And I'm gonna actually try on the air for the first time in front of you and give you my very honest opinion. They're called Plant Bites. They come in fig and triple berry, cherry and date, and mango and banana. I cannot wait to try them because all the time I'm hearing from people that are athletes or endurance athletes, what can I take on runs? I don't like those gels and all that stuff and all the sugar. Well, this is gonna be your solution. But before I taste it on the air, we first wanna meet her, find out how and why she created this product and get to know her a little bit more. And her name is Izzy Fisher and please welcome her to the show. It's so nice to meet you. Thanks, AJ. I'm super excited to be here. Thanks for the intro. Oh, my pleasure. You're so lucky you're in Hawaii. Yeah, <laughs> not for long. I get on a flight today, actually, but um, it has been a wonderful month. I've been surfing it up and enjoying the sunshine and I'm sad to leave, but I think I, I think I successfully miss out on winter. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Cause you, cause so, so nor normally you live in Boston where you go to school. I, uh, I, I did school there before. And then I was in Boston, I'm actually moving back to Boulder, Colorado this summer to do some biking, hiking. Um, that's where I grew up. So wow. I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> How long have you been following a plant-based diet and what made you decide to go plant-based? Yeah. So I started a plant-based diet. Um, I want to say it was about four years ago. I tend to not keep track and it's always either three years or four years, somewhere around that mark. Um, but I started to go plant-based for two reasons, actually. Um, the first reason was I suffered from um, some bad food relationships and eating disorders in college. And I always was on all these different fad diets, like constantly trying to lose 10 pounds. And, and I never really approached it from a health perspective. And I really fell in love with plant-based eating because there was this whole new environment around eating. It was, it was health. It was nutrients. It was what are you eating for your lifespan, for your health span, rather than like quickest way to lose weight, like really quick. And you're starving yourself. You're not getting your nutrients, like all these things that were just really toxic for me as a young female athlete. Um, and so as I became more competitive, in my triathlon career, I was plant-based and I felt amazing. Like I felt super power. I, you know, naturally lost some weight that I, that really was, I wanted to lose, not that I needed to, but because it really helped my performance and running, um, and cycling and, and I didn't have to think about it. And then I became really passionate about just the health benefits on plant-based diet and fueling with plants. And that was something that became really forward in my training because my coaches, my fellow teammates, they were just always telling me that you need to eat meat. You need to eat more protein to be an athlete. And I just saw the difference. And I mean, I qualified for world championships and triathlon the year I started fueling with a plant-based diet. And I didn't really think that those, that was a coincidence just because my performance and everything peaked so much. So I'm totally a convert. And so it's a combination between a couple of things, but mostly just how amazing I feel and you know, spread and spread in the plant-based love. <laughs> well, well, thank you for being on our team. When did you first start doing triathletes? I'm guessing somebody like you that's so young, you probably always were athletic. Yeah. So I started kind of swimming. I, I was a swimmer first. So I swam from a young age and was um, swimming in practice in high school, middle school. Um, and I, I wouldn't say I was necessarily competitive. I really liked the workouts from, from swimming. So I kind of started there but I cycled, I hiked, I just grew up generally active because I grew up in the Boulder area, just around all the outdoor sports. Um, so yes, I've always been into athletics and then I got really into triathlon mid-college and fully became competitive um, 2018. So three or four years, three years. So that, that's amazing. Did you, did you do this? Like, is this your job to be a triathlete? No. So I am more so just competitive on the side. I never really had the drive to focus on becoming professional and being, making a pro career out of triathlon. It's more a passion project for me and I'm good at it. So I like to compete in, in age group triathlons and, you know, maybe one day, maybe in the next five, 10 years, I might like really decide that I'll go for the professional career, but that is like, that's a whole nother game to play. <laughs> How many hours a day do you have to spend training or does it depend if you have a race? 
Yeah, it totally depends. Like right now I'm not really training for anything, which I'm here, I'm surfing, I'm doing other athletic things, but um, before COVID, you know, I had three, four races on my calendar throughout the year. And I mean, you're training at least two hours a day. And then on the weekends, you have four to four plus hour workout Saturdays and Sundays. Um, you're sitting on the bike trainer all day on Saturday in front of the TV on Sunday, you're doing long runs. Um, and then during the week you have your strength workouts, your yoga, your short runs, your short bike rides, your swims, Um, and if you're doing it at a professional level, I mean, you're doing that all day, every day, pretty much with naps and eating in between. So I think it would be really cool to do. Like it's always been a dream of mine, but I, um, am more passionate about entrepreneurship. And so I I took that route instead of working out for my lifetime. (laughs) Well, that is really cool because I just think that, you know, I've had so many ideas for products and food products and even had some accepted to whole foods, but the idea that you created a product and got it to market, like uh, kudos to you, because that's fantastic. It's hard. It's been a crazy year. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm going to do the blind taste test in a minute, but let's first talk about what plant bites are. Who are they for? What gave yeah. you the idea? Okay. Yeah. So like I said, when I was getting really into plant-based eating, I was questioning the way that I was feeling my workout. So my coaches had this idea that they were putting in my head that was called training your stomach. And so part of our training protocol was also training our stomach for races, meaning all of these nutrition products that are often at the aid stations, you need to be able to stomach those. You need to be able to not have a stomach ache or get cramps or digestive issues from these products because you will get digestive issues if you don't try them out first and make sure your body's used to it. And I was like, okay, that seems super backwards. Why am I, why am I forcing my body to adjust to fake sugars and ingredients that just made no sense to me? And I did it. I mean, for several months, I just struggled with GI issues and cramps and stomach problems and was taking all these different nutrition products that were just mounted dextrin, glycerin, brown rice syrup, like even the cane sugar based products. I just immediately had stomach aches and you know, it would lead to me not finishing races, not being able to go train. And I also just felt bad all the time. And I was like, okay, why am I eating this really healthy plant-based diet in my regular life? But when I do something super inherently healthy for me, like exercise, I'm fueling with crap. Like I was just like, this is so stupid. And so I became really passionate about dealing with whole foods. And so I told my coaches, I was like, you know what? I'm not trying to become a professional athlete right now. I really want to serve me and what makes me feel good. And so I'm going to use this. And I used figs, dates, bananas, sweet potatoes, you name it. I started making sticky rice balls to get really a lot of higher carbs. And I realized that the reason why these products exist is because training with whole foods like that, it's not necessarily ideal. You know, it's kind of hard to take them on the run. They get sticky. They're really hard to put in plastic bags. You have to pre-cook them. It's just, it's a lot of work. And as someone who was training all the time, it just became harder and harder to use these foods, uh, especially when they're melting on the run or on the bike and all these things. So I started playing around in my food processor in my kitchen and buying figs and dates and bananas and putting them together in different combinations and actually looking at the nutrition label for all of the very common gels, the common gummies, all of the different sports nutrition products and trying to recreate that nutrition label, but doing it with whole foods. And that's how plant bites was born on a Sunday in my kitchen. After a long day of food processing, various fruits together, I I nailed it. It was the perfect texture. It was easy on the go. It tasted awesome. And the rest is kind of history. And just from there, I was like, okay, I started using them. And um, I met Matt, who is the CEO of Complement, and he loved the product and we joined forces there. And it's just been, it's been a wild ride ever since. And, you know, I hired a team of friends and family to help me cook them in a commercial kitchen for our first launch, and then eventually hired a real staff. And now we have a manufacturer and it's only been a year that this product has been out. So it has been a really, really cool experience to see, you know, people changing how nutrition and athletics is totally thought of. Yeah, that is really, really cool. And by Matt, you mean Matt Frazier from No Meat Athlete. Mm -hmm. And did did you have any experience as a chef or a recipe creator before you developed Plant Bites? So it's funny you say that. I actually was kind of maybe considering starting like a personal blog um, 
for recipe creating. Cause I, I love plant-based cooking and I, I did a short stint in, um, Thailand where I took a plant-based cooking class there and I love, love, love cooking. So I started, I really was always passionate about creating in the kitchen. So I had that background, um, going into the product, but what was cool to see the product evolve over the past year was, um, people started using them as a snack food. So the benefit to training with whole foods is that you can actually eat them after dinner or in the afternoon. And people started feeding them to your kid, their kids and using them at work. And so it's really not just an energy fuel, although it look, works very good for it. It's, you know, it's actually great for people who are on the go and want a healthy snack instead of, you know, all of the crap that they, you can buy at the store now. Well, I love that they have no refined sugar. It's just fruit. There's no nuts in them. They're very low in fat, very low in sodium. I understand because of the athletic reason you need to put a little salt in, but mm -hmm. it is very low sodium. It's 25. I mean, it couldn't, but oh. would there ever be one with no sodium, just in case that rare person that's on dialysis or a kidney patient, would you ever make a, a sodium free one? Yeah. So the other thing that we're finding as of very recently is we're having a lot of customers that have diabetes actually come um, and say that they love to use plant bites for the reason of helping with their diabetes, like the perfect snack for them. And they, some of them have asked about the salt and a lot of people who are eating plant-based also eat low salt. And so we are considering rolling out some that have no a product that's same flavors, no salt. And we actually might take it out altogether because we find that athletes typically supplement with salt beverages or salt sticks anyways. Um, and the 25 milligrams isn't really doing much to help with the salt replenishment. You, you do need to maybe make a beverage or something like that. That'd be great because then you know who could get behind these is my friend, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, who's real strict SOS free. Well, well I think, it's you know, what they say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And so I think we need to test these out. Clean energy just took on a whole new, I just love it. I love the way they look. Okay, so guys, I'm going to, oh, they're cute. Oh, they smell good. Look, they're little, like little coins. So the first flavor I'm tasting is the fig and triple berry. Okay, here it is. It's about the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit bigger. I have them here too in the bigger pouches. Mm. I don't usually eat on the air. <laughs> a new experiment. Mm. So there's dried figs and then raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries and beet root in those. It, I know there's no chocolate in it, but it almost has a chocolate like flavor. Yeah, the figs and mm. the beetroot, the combination of that. Beetroot actually kind of has a little like edge of a cacao powder, so. And it's not overly sweet, even though it's fruit, it's not like sickly sweet, like when you eat, you know, oh, like, yeah. make, like uh, every now and then I'll eat a piece of dried watermelon. I'm like, okay, so this one's delicious. I'm going I, to, uh, to do, be fair, I have, one. I have to cleanse my palate between flavors. And for those of you who do eat nut butters or nuts, and I actually love putting a little disc with like a little peanut butter and a square of dark chocolate for an after dinner snack. Oh, it's to die for. Do you have to say? All right. So the next flavor is cherry date. I'm a big fan of cherry. So let's just see. Okay. Looks the same, but it's a little lighter. If I was demure, I would just eat half of it. I like putting the whole thing in my mouth. Where do you get them? If you're watching on Facebook, you've got to watch on YouTube because the show notes, there's a link, but I'll see if I can put it in the chat. But first I got to eat. <laughs> you can go to um, lovecompliment.com or plantbites.com. Check them out there. So that one's cherries, dates, chia. Mm -hmm. And we put cassava flour in all of them. It's the least refined flour you could possibly get. It's literally just the dried out uh, yucca root and that's it. It's just ground up dried yucca and it's, it's very, very good for you. Yum. That was delicious too. And now ooh, this one's a different color. This one's the most controversial flavor. I do have to say some people it's their all time favorite and some people really don't like it. So it's mango, banana, and turmeric. Right, so this will be interesting because we just heard the other day from the Sher's eyes that we need to have turmeric. So let's see. Very turmeric-y. Mm. What side of the controversy are you on? <laughs> Not sure yet. It's different. Hmm. Well, 
Like, I don't hate it. Like, I'm not going to like, <laughs> I'm being honest. I mean, I'm, you haven't made it. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's just, that, you know, the first one was like so incredible. And I think that I, I, I don't know if it's because I tasted them in this order, but I think this one is my favorite. Me too. And I think this one is my second favorite. Me too. And I'm just, you know, it'd be interesting what it would taste like without the tumor. It's not horrible, but <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't love it as much as the other two. I hope I don't. Hey, I told you it's the most controversial one. I mean, some people just swear by that flavor. They're like, these are the best thing ever. I'm on your side. I actually don't think this is the best one, but my, my, like my boyfriend's girlfriend doesn't like any of the other flavors. Wait, wait, this your one, boyfriend's so. girlfriend, your boyfriend has a girlfriend. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's my <laughs> <laughs> my brother's girlfriend. My, brother, my boyfriend does not have a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a Freudian slip, but you can imagine how that sounded. <laughs> I hope it's not a Freudian slip too. Because <laughs> my boyfriend's girlfriend would be me then. Oh my God. So um, Alexis, those are, yes, they're completely unsweetened. And actually they're, they're really, and it's not that I wouldn't eat the last one. It's just that I love the first, uh, the, the, the fig is, it tasted like chocolate. For yeah, sure. I love the thing too. They're, they're really good. What is the best seller of the three flavors? So cherry date falls in the middle every time. It's like our everyone's second favorite and fig berry and mango are, they come up on top, but nobody buys them together. <laughs> so, like I said, it's very controversial. So if you buy them, we sell a variety box where you can buy them all of all of the flavors. I would, I would recommend that if you're starting out and testing them out because you can get them in these little packs. And then we want to save everything is in post-consumer recycled material, but this is a lot of packaging. So we do offer um, these bigger bags and then also a bulk option. And they keep really, really well in the fridge and even the freezer because they don't need to be defrosted. You know, and I like the size because I had three of them and that's like, I, I, you know, usually I, this is after lunch where I live and usually I have something a little bit sweet after lunch, usually fruit and that three of them was like the perfect, oh, like yeah. the perfect amount. Totally. Yeah. I do like them. Are there any other flavors you're considering or are there flavors that maybe you tried that didn't make it? Yeah. So we did a pineapple lime at first. Um, that one we might roll out eventually. Pineapples are really expensive. So that maybe is a later as we're, as we were growing to do that. Um, we, for kids, actually, we're thinking about rolling out some kids branded ones that are more friendly flavors. So maybe an apple cinnamon, a strawberry banana, um, those types of flavors. And then the ones that I tried originally, I, I tried really interesting flavors because I'm like a big miso sesame, like umami. I like all those weird flavors. Um, so I tried a goji bear and pear one, a go goji berry and pear one, which I really liked. Um, but it was kind of hard to make. And then I tried, um, a, well, another one with figs and it was fig and cocoa powder. So like talk about chocolate. It was like a very chocolatey one. Um, but these were, these are the best. They were easy, easily scaled, which is hard when you're creating a food product. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll pro probably make a bunch of decisions in the next year or so on which flavors we'll stay with, which new flavors we'll go up against. Um, and we are actually launching soon. So to stay tuned, um, some fat based ones. So they're not necessarily for people who are following a low fat diet, but for athletes or people who are wanting like more fat protein, um, there'll be like a peanut butter chocolate and a chocolate almond sea salt. Oh, that sounds great. Well, the, the kid flavors sound even good for adults. Cause when I think strawberry banana, I think like it could be like Starburst, like healthy. Oh, yeah, totally. That's because the goal. they kind of have that texture almost. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the goal. I mean, I wanted to create something cause I liked the gummies for working out. They were perfect, like a little chew and they were kind of tasty, but they coated my mouth and they were super sweet and the ingredients were bad. I always felt I had a cramp every time I ate them. So these, this was, that was the goal with this. And I used the cassava. I actually originally when, we were, when I was making them used um, tapioca flour, cause I thought that would work to make that gummy texture and I wanted a better, wholer version of that. And that's how we came up with the cassava. That's cool. Any uh, any uh, chance of using jackfruit? I love dried jackfruit. It's so delicious. I've never tried dried jackfruit. I love jackfruit. I'm a big fruit person and I could eat a whole jackfruit in one sitting. 
but I've never tried ja- dried jackfruit. I oh, should try that out. It's really good. It's, I, I get it at Sprouts. It's really, and I love dried kiwi. Those are two of my favorites. So, Is it like a bubble, like, cause jackfruit sometimes has a bubble gummy flavor. Does it taste yeah. like bubble gum? It tastes like juicy fruit. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Susan, who's watching live, says, what is the protein count and carbs and calories? I can't read it because I don't have my glasses. So maybe Izzy can tell. I can do it. Um, yeah. So there's actually, I'm going to read it off of this because I can't remember. It's just to be transparent. I don't memorize the nutrition labels, even though I've spent so much time with this nutrition label. Um, so we, there's not much protein. In it. It's only one gram. It's meant to be a fruit energy carbohydrate based source. So that new product is that person might be interested in it because it is a protein bite. But um, there's 14 grams of carbohydrates in two of them. Um, And then the calories in two are 60. And that varies a little bit between the three um, different flavors. No fat, fat free. Yeah. And and they were filling and they just, they they hit the spot. So that's, have you ever thought of doing anything with sweet potato? Because don't sometimes athletes fuel themselves with sweet potatoes? Like yeah. I see those little, like they're gel packs, but they don't have gunk in them. It's almost like just sweet potato puree. Yeah. The fuel for fire, that brand, they do a good one. Um, I, I mean, I use, I used to use sweet potatoes all the time before I created these. And yeah, that is a goal for sure. I actually did create a sweet potato one. It was like a sweet potato, maple, cinnamon one. It tasted too much like Thanksgiving though. <laughs> And so I didn't work as hard to iterate on it, but I would actually love to use the, the purple Okinawa sweet potatoes to make one. Cause those are sweet. So that could be a good, a good iteration, but that is a, that's a good idea. Yeah. That, cause I, I love anything. And I love, I agree with you, the purple ones. Well, you're in Hawaii now, so you probably have them all the time. Yeah. I'm eating them a lot. Yeah. I love them. So but good. Do you still, are you still involved with Tufts? Yeah. So, um, I actually am on a leave of absence from Tufts right now because of plant bites. I couldn't find the time to do my plant bites full time and do my grad school, but, um, I did start my master's in nutrition there. And that was before I even started this company at all. It's actually funny because during my course in Tufts, I was in a food for entrepreneurship class and that kind of sparked my mind to be like, why am I not just doing this? I've had this product for a couple of years. I might as well do it. Um, so that was actually my original motivation to kind of go out and actually start the business. And uh, my conversation with Matt was also a huge factor in that. But um, I love Tufts and the nutrition program there is absolutely amazing. The people there, the support that I get even now as an entrepreneur afterwards is great. And I will eventually go back and finish it, um, whether that's next year or the year after, we'll see. But once we get Plant Bites off the ground and running, that's the goal. Yeah, off and running. Ha <laughs> ha, get it. <laughs> so No do, pun intended. <laughs> do you, I know that a lot, of, a lot of times athletes, they, they, you know, things like Gatorade, not so healthy, right? No, no, no. Okay. I have a lot to say on this topic. Um, so as I said before, when you're eating the plant bites, it's good for calories. So you take a couple plant bites on your run. Um, often people maybe who are just doing workouts in the morning, it's great to take one or two of these. If you're fasted, um, if you're fasting until noon or one or something like that, I will t- often take one or two plant bites before a workout. Cause it kind of helps with that mental boost of energy almost. But if you need salt replacement, especially endurance athletes, you do need a sports drink. And all of the sports drinks out there are cane sugar or worse, Gatorade and other drinks like Gatorade have just completely fake sugar and it's all chemicals. Um, I make my own sports drink right now, but we are hopefully not going to say we are for sure because we're still working out the details, but coming out with a a drink mix that's based completely on whole foods. Um, We'll add salt to that, of course. There'll be a lot of salt. So if you follow a no salt diet, that won't be for you, but, um, it'll be to- all the carbohydrates will come from whole foods and it'll be a drink powder you can put in your drink, um, which hasn't been done before. I don't think it's been done before at all, but, um, I currently make my drink mix and I do coconut water and then I'll do fruit powders. So I'll buy like raspberry powder, blueberry powder, lemon powder, or I'll make it. I have a dehydrator and then I'll combine them and put them in my drink to get a burst of electrolytes and carbs. That actually sounds good. It's really good. It's actually very refreshing. <laughs> do you ever do anything with beets? Because I've always heard that the nitrates or the nitrites in beets are supposed to be good for people that are athletic. 
Yes, yeah, so I believe it's vasodilation it helps with. It helps with the endurance, um, building up those endurance muscles in your lungs. Um, so I put beet powder in my drink sometimes, the coconut water. And then that was the original idea behind putting beet powder in the fig berry flavor. Um, but I do believe, of course, someone who follows religiously a plant-based diet, eating the beets in the whole form are definitely the way to go. Yeah. Nice. Any plans for like, maybe like a whole bar, you know how like they have like these like bars, uh, you know, I don't know, cliff bar or lar- I get bar. Like, like something a little bit bigger than a bite. Yeah. So the, the protein bite line that we're probably going to come out with this summer is going to be similar, the bites. And the idea behind that was because I personally don't like bars. I think they're like either too big or too small. Like if I want a full meal, they're too small. And if I want just a snack, they're too big, um, in terms of just calories and macros, like they're so high in fat and they're just really not the best ideal snack. And I never found they were. So that was actually the idea. We'll, we'll sell them in these little packs. So like you'll, you can get the same amount as a bar. It'll be five bites or four bites. Um, but we might eventually come out with a bar just depending on how customers receive those. And, um, it's all iterative processes starting a food business. So we'll see. <laughs> nice. Well, so you have some other products too. Well, maybe not you, but you're working with compliment yep. now. Yep. And, and my husband, actually, I don't do protein powders because I'm not an athlete of any kind, <laughs> but my husband does use this one and he says it tastes really good. And what I love about your protein powders is you don't put that nasty stevia in it. We're anti stevia as a business. So I'm working a lot with compliment and new products and product development. And every time, no matter what manufacturers want to put stevia or your, you know, formulators want to put stevia and I'm like, no, it's just bad and it doesn't taste good. So yeah, the protein powder is great. I use it too. Um, I actually use it a lot in cooking. So if I want to make like a, I often replace it with flour, the protein powder with flour, Um, and it works great. It doesn't have that chalky flavor or really any taste at all in baked goods and so many other proteins, they just try to flavor it. Um, and you know, this, this protein is meant to go in your plant-based smoothies and like things that have flavor and meat and already have that sweetness. And you don't need to add it just as like to milk as like a chocolate shake. So I really love the protein for sure. And I actually will add, if I do want like a chocolate milkshake, almost I'll do the protein powder with some cocoa powder and almond milk. And it does, it tastes like a chocolate shake. <laughs> well, like the fig bite tasted like chocolate to me without any chocolate. So that was pretty cool. And my husband also takes this. This is the, uh, this is what Victoria Moran swears by. She's the one that told me about it. It's hard I to take them every day. Yeah. They're great. All in one, especially for people who are not eating animal products. Right. Well, so Elizabeth says, can you ask her about the vitamin they sell? I think she must mean this because this is the only, well, is it the only supplement or one of just a few. Yeah. So they have a few different supplements. The, the, those are their main product, the complement plus, and it's the vegan supplement. It's got B12, DHA, um, EPA, K2, um, and a couple other things. I don't have the bottle in front of me. Um, but it's basically all in one. Like if you're not eating animal products, that supplement is so great because you only have to take three capsules a day and you don't need anything else. And the greatest thing about that supplement is that they third party test and they post the results on the website. And so many supplement companies do not do that because it's not regulated by the FDA. So they don't have to. So you never know what's in your supplement, if they're putting extra ingredients in it or something got in during manufacturing. And, you know, we test for heavy metals, we're testing for the safety and also to make sure the nutrient levels are enough so that you're not having health problems when you're taking your supplement. Um, so it's a really, really great product. I take it every day. Then they've got two other products and that they're liquid vitamins. Um, one of them is the omegas. And then the other one is a compliment plus, but in a liquid format for children is the products meant for. So you can put it on their food or in smoothies or something like that. I love that you're anti stevia. I am too. Uh, All the GI doctors I talk to say it's just much worse for us than sugar. And it just keeps people at a perpetually high level of desiring sweet. Yep. And it's, it's just like diet soda. It's the same thing. It's like just more natural form, which is good. Of course, if you're gonna have that, like maybe you should choose stevia, but I would almost say that you should just have pure coconut sugar over stevia. You know, I know people don't want the calories and all that, but at least you're not tricking your body to believe that you're getting these fake 
calories, you know, at least the, the coconut sugar has the calories, although it's not nutrient dense. So it's not going to solve many problems for you, but I, yeah, I would rather just eat. I was making banana bread with some friends the other day and, um, there was coconut sugar in the recipe and they're like, can we use stevia? And I was like, Ugh. what you want to put stevia on the banana bread instead of coconut sugar? I know. I agree with you. I, I, I'd rather, I mean, I'd rather use dates for everything, but if it comes down to that, I'd much rather have people use sugar than stevia. Elizabeth says, do the, do the supplements have a fishy taste? No, they do not actually at all. Um, which is shocking <laughs> to me. Um, the supplements are pretty flavorless. Sometimes they'll smell like when you open the bottle, they'll smell a little weird, but when you actually put them in your mouth, I've taken omegas before that have that really strong, like fishy smell and fishy taste. And these do not have that. Nice. And let's see, Judith says, are the ingredients organic? I'm assuming in the plant bites. Yes. All the ingredients are organic. We're working on getting our organic certifications that should be coming soon, but, um, every single thing we put in there is organic. That's so great. Well, you, this is a question actually, and last guest today, we didn't ask, but cause he had a long PowerPoint, but, uh, what, what do you eat in a day? And it doesn't matter. Does it depend if you're, I would imagine if you're training or not. Yeah. So I guess I could give one day when I am training and one day when I'm not training, if that works. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. So when I am training, I eat a lot of food. So, um, I'll typically my workout schedule, I'll wake up at five or five 30 and I will, I don't like working out first thing in the morning. So I usually wait a little bit. I'll drink coffee and I'll do either like a piece of Ezekiel bread with some light nut butter and a banana, like a, like a teaspoon of nut butter and a whole banana crushed on there. Um, just for something in my stomach, or I'll do something like plant bites, depending on what my workout is. If it's longer than 90 minutes, I'll do something a little more calorie dense. If it's shorter, I'll just do a plant bite or a date or something like that. Go out on my first workout, come back work. When I get back, I'll usually do a big smoothie, like an entire blender of smoothie. And that smoothie has common protein powder in it greens and like every fruit I can find in my fridge, bananas, dates, it's a big smoothie. And I'll spend like the next couple of hours drinking that a couple hours later, I'll do a big salad, um, with a starch in it, whether potatoes or a grain of some sort, um, beans or, or edamame, some sort of legume, a nut or a seed based dressing, add seeds on top, and then tons of greens and maybe some other vegetables, carrots, cucumbers, whatever I can find in my fridge. Um, and then I'll do another workout typically in the afternoon and I'll come back and have a, a snack plate, which is usually vegetables and hummus, um, plus maybe something else. If I have in my fridge, like a sweet potato or something a little bit more higher in calories. And then for dinner, I will have kind of my more bulky meal. And I do my bulkier meal when I'm working out at night because of the morning workouts, it kind of like carbo load a little bit. So that'll be like a rice and beans or a chili with rice or a plant-based pasta with tofu or an Asian stir fry. I eat a lot of Asian food. Um, so that's my regular day. And then when I'm not working out, um, I'm a believer in less is more. Um, I don't, I, I'm, I prioritize the nutrition a lot and make sure I get all of the components of a plant-based diet that you need in a day. But I don't really eat three meals a day. I don't think you really need to eat three meals a day as long as you're eating enough. Um, so I'll typically wake up and have coffee and then my first meal will be 10 or 11. Um, and that's typically a big bowl of fruit with maybe some seeds on top or some coconut or something like that, like a big bowl of fruit. I'm talking like maybe four bananas in there and like the whole thing of berry, like tons of fruit, any type of fruit I can have. So being in Hawaii has been like, the dream because I have like a whole pineapple every day. Um, and then I'll typically wait to eat. I'll probably have a snack that's carrots and hummus, snap peas and hummus, um, around two or 3 PM. And then I'll have dinner, the, the similar dinner to what I eat when I'm working out, just like a stir fry with tofu or rice and a salad. The other day I made taro cakes with salad, which was amazing. Um, and I like to kind of play around in the kitchen and get creative there, um, at dinner. Nice. Someone's asking, are you a plant-based nutritionist? I know I'm not, but I was going to school for it. So eventually I will be one. <laughs> and, um, I, I, I happily actually meet with people to give nutrition advice as I have done a lot of studying of it, but it's all advice, uh, based on personal experience. I'm, I'm not a licensed professional yet, but hopefully I'll have my, um, RD license in the next few years. 
Oh, that's amazing. Have you influenced any of your friends, family, or fellow athletes to go plant-based since they've seen your outcomes? Yeah. So I actually, my, both of my parents went plant-based a couple of years ago and lost, they both lost tons of weight. And, um, my dad was on blood pressure medication and antidepressants and he got off both of those and lost 80 pounds. Same with my mom. Um, both of them are extremely healthy now, really into working out. They hike every day in Colorado, eat plant-based and, um, are 55 and they look like they have aged backwards 10 years, both of them. Um, so it's been really inspiring. And I've had a couple, couple athletes, fellow athletes switch at least to fueling with whole foods and ditching the gels. Um, we actually have a campaign that we use with plant bites that says friends don't let friends use energy gels. That's kind of how I feel about it. <laughs> well, that is so cool because it, maybe you can revolutionize the whole sports world and it just happens to be plant-based and awesome. That's what I'm hoping for. I just, I want to change the way nutrition and athletics is conceptualized because right now it's all marketing and it's, it's not enough healthy choices. Hmm. Am I hearing a rooster in the background? Yeah. (laughs) Hawaii has roosters and chickens walking around everywhere. It's crazy. Oh, that is hilarious. Anyway, guy. Um, so if we, is it best once we open these to refrigerate them? You can, um, if you want them to last a long time, put them in the refrigerator. They do last, a, you know, a couple of weeks out of the refrigerator. Um, I, you know, I'll take them on camping trips, long hikes, long bike rides, and they're totally good. Or I'll take them traveling and they're fine, but I do store them in the refrigerator just because they are based on whole foods. So they're not necessarily just going to sit in your pantry for a year and be fine. I know a lot of products like they get endorsements by athletes. Have you ever sent these to any really major professional athletes in any sports to see if they like them and if they would use them? Yeah. So we're working on that right now. Um, we've got a few runners, uh, that are professional runners. One of them is some of them are Nike runners. Some of them are Under Armour runners. I, can, I don't think I can say who yet. Cause we're working on some sponsorship deals. Um, but we have done so. And if you guys pay attention and follow the emails and the websites, you'll see some exciting stuff on that soon. You want to hear my idea? I'll give it to you for free. Yeah. Let's okay. hear it. Well, here, I mean, no, nothing about the product or to change it, but I know that some of the bags are bigger than this. Maybe put their picture on the bag, just kind of like, we, you know, on the Wheaties box, but the vegan athlete totally. put the picture on plant bites. I love it. I think that's awesome. We're actually really trying to humanize this brand a little more because I think it's, it's so much more meaningful to know that you're working with humans rather than just like another faceless brand. So that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, you can, you can have it. I I would love to (laughs) open something up and look at Robert Cheek's picture or whoever. (laughs) Maybe we have to put you on one of the bags. Well, I'm probably as far from an athlete. Start running. But I still, I still love this idea because, like you say, what what they're fueling themselves with is not it's not healthy, and it doesn't it may, it's counterintuitive when they're trying to be so healthy with all this exercise and eating right, and then to eat just just use junk just to get through the runs. It, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's the equivalent of when I had a coach tell me I needed to train my stomach and that I wouldn't go far in my career if I didn't. I was like okay, you wouldn't tell me to do that on my regular diet. Like what I need to like prepare my stomach by eating tons of ice cream, even though I know dairy hurts my stomach. Like you don't eat ice cream if you're lactose intolerant because it hurts your stomach. So why am I doing that in athletics? It makes no sense. <laughs> like when you watch, I don't really watch marathons, but like, oh, it's often athletes that are from other countries, you know, like Kenya, for example, that, that will win these races. And I can't imagine in their country, they're fueling themselves with these gels. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. I mean, you, I don't know, this is something that I should look at, but I highly doubt that the contracts for sponsorships of some of these bigger products like Red Bull and goo are sponsoring these really, really high level foreign athletes. Um, I, you would be surprised how many vegan athletes we talk to that have contracts with some of these nutrition products that want to terminate their contracts with them after they try plant bites. So it is definitely, um, it's the new plant-based energy. It's, it's going that direction. And I hope that we can be a part of changing that structure. Well, I just love it. I like to say, I love when people, you know, I love entrepreneurs. I love when people create things and to see it into fruition. That's always been a dream of mine. And just congratulations. I mean, you're so young and you're already a 
entrepreneur and you've got like three products on the market. <laughs> and soon to be six. Keep in mind. <laughs> yeah, this one, it's funny. This one is actually the, not that it matters because it's like a 10 calorie difference, but this one, which was my favorite. And I don't think it's because it was first. I think that you got me with the berry. Uh, this one is also the lowest in calories too. Yeah, it is. It is the best one. I, I think it's the best one. I think a lot of our team thinks the best one. Um, but people love that mango banana. I think it's the something about the turmeric. It's like cilantro. Yeah. Has Dr. Berger <laughs> tried these? No, I would love an introduction though. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I give you his address maybe. I mean, cause uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know how strict he is on salt. He allows me so, but I, I mean, I know he loves turmeric. I think he would love these. Yeah. Yeah. The turmeric's really good for you. And it's hard to use it in cooking because it's really strong. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I wonder if there's something that would upset it a little, like, I don't know what normally goes with turmeric. I don't know. But, uh, Mango banana, obviously. <laughs> obviously, yeah. Or yeah, but but cinnamon in one of these, I think would be great. I would love something with a little cinnamon. Apple cinnamon is is probably on our, our next year docket. So keep an eye. I'll send them to you. And maybe I'll send you some samples of some new flavors. Yeah. Every time you get a new flavor, come on and I'll taste it on the air. Do you, So you actually cook these. So these aren't, I mean, not that it matters to me, but you, you said I cook them. So it's not really a raw product. No. So I mean- you could argue it's a raw product. The cooking is more so um, baking out just the slight extra hydration. They're baked for like eight to 10 minutes. Um, but it's essentially just pureeing things together and then balling them up and, and putting them in the oven for a couple minutes to bake out extra hydration. How come you made it in a round shape, like a, almost a flat round shape instead of a, like a ball or I'm just curious, a square. Yeah. Um, so the evolution of the shape has been interesting. This product is actually really hard to make because it's a lot of sticky fruit. And I made it in a commercial kitchen with my friends and family. And then with a team for the first six months this summer, I was up at like 4 a.m. and driving to Denver to go to this commercial kitchen all day and covering myself in mango all day. Um, it was lots of stories to tell from that but originally like in my first ever batch we made we made them in mini muffin tins and then we made them in little like ice cube trays and then we made them in baking sheets and cut them into squares um, and then with our newest manufacturer they had a machine that was able to put them in these discs so um, and that was the easiest thing it was most efficient um, so that's really why they're in the discs. I like the discs, the, but the original form is the squares, the little square pieces. No, they're cute. Well, this is great. Well, thank you so much. And guys, yeah, Izzy's offering you guys 10% if you want to try the product. And especially if you're an athlete and you want to fuel your work. Oh, the discount code isn't working. No way. Come on. No, it has to work. Oh, we'll check Jeff it AJ? Yeah. All caps? Me, uh, hold on. I put it in the chat like a bunch of times. Let me put it again. It's got I mean, to work. I can make sure it works right Chef, now. Yeah, Izzy's going to check. You go to, yeah, put in Chef AJ. It's all not, cap. Chef, yeah, all caps, Chef AJ. Ah, it worked for Alexis. So that means it's working. Terrific. Great. We'll get it to work for you, Cindy, I'm sure. Yeah. So Can't wait for you guys all to try it. Yeah. Well, thank and congratulations. Uh, again, like I'm so impressed. You're so, you're, 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 you're you know, you're young enough to be not, not just my daughter, but my granddaughter. <laughs> I have had children. And so, and thank you for being vegan. I really appreciate it because it's going to revolutionize uh, athletics. I think it, when enough people learn that some of the stuff they're putting in their body isn't, I not hope so. but it's not really helping their workout. That's the thing. It's, it, it would be one thing if it worked, but it's, it's, it's it doesn't it just I promise that if athletes start feeling this way they will start feeling so much better throughout their entire day and for their workout the next day I swear by it that's great well thank you so much Izzy I really appreciate it yeah thank you I'm gonna go get a swim in and take some plant bites on my go <laughs> good for you thanks so much and thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live please come back tomorrow for our Passover show we're gonna be making an entire Passover meal with Chef Carol Levy and Shada Soleimani from Healthy Cooking with Shado. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>